Thank you for having me here. It's such an honor to be here. I'll start off by this. We must realize that there are real life consequences for our inactions. I'll take it again. There are real life consequences for our inactions. You know, my initial flight to Rome was canceled two days ago. After nearly an hour of battling to sort out what the technical issue was, uh, we heard what every traveler dreads to hear. I'm sorry your flight has been canceled. The airline conducted routine tests and decided it wasn't safe to fly the aircraft. Inaction, in this case, would have been refusing to carry out critical checks which would have come with real life consequences. Consequences that may include not being alive to give this talk. You see, dear friends, Africa's healthcare delivery system can be likened to an airline. Sadly, an airline that is flying a series of very, very faulty aircrafts. Our engines are bad, the fuel is nearly out, and perhaps more dangerously, the pilots are tired of this entire business. You see, the engine that drives this Africa Healthcare Airways is its financing system, with the fuel being the cash itself. Dear friends, our engine is not working. As my friend Lawal Bakari of Ebola Alert said a few weeks ago at Nigeria's Future of Health Conference in Abuja, we must be deliberate in our actions. There is no longer time for fiddling about. There is no longer time for beating about the bush. Africa, and specifically here, Nigeria, cannot continue flying such a terribly faulty aircraft while the whole world stands in inaction. We are having way too many crashes. Nigeria's insurance market currently caters essentially to the needs of the elite and those in formal employment, contributing a mere 0.72% to its GDP. The Africa and global average stands at 3.3 and 7% respectively. With over 70% of its population living below $1.25 and in rural settings, mainstream insurance coverage remains far above the reach of most. As recent, recent statistics reveal that only 1% of the adult population is insured. Insurance specifically designed for low-income markets, known as micro-insurance, can be utilized in healthcare to shore up resources for health and deliver access to basic medical services. Delivering micro-insurance, however, remains an uphill task with the greatest obstacle being collection of regular premiums. As premiums are deliberately set at very low rates, there is need to utilize third party partners or aggregators with an existing client network to reach very large populations cost effectively and ensure financial viability of mobile health insurance. My solution plans to expand health insurance coverage to basic health care among the Nigerian population through the twin instruments of advocacy and mobile phone technology. Advocacy to promote mandatory pooling of resources to fund health care provision to all, irrespective of social status or financial capacity, and technology to enable ease of subscription. Access to basic health care, we know, is a fundamental human right, as enshrined in Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, despite our written commitment to guaranteeing basic health care, recent statistics reveal that no less than 400 million people globally lack access to at least one essential health service. Now, universal health coverage simply means that all people receive access to the health care that they need without financial hardship. Despite uh, government's willingness, in some cases, to deliver health care, the financial cost of delivering universal health coverage is way above the reach of many developing countries. In a seminal paper written by our dear Professor Sachs here, published in The Lancet in 2012, he stated that uh, it would cost between $50 to $60 to provide universal health care um, for each individual. That is clearly above the reach of many developing countries. 
Now, my solution plans to provide universal health care um, using mobile technology. We hope to expand insurance coverage by enlisting and enrolling people um, to basic access to health care by making automatic airtime deductions from their mobile phones. We realize that there is a lot of uh, mutual, a lot of distrust of insurance companies um, in developing countries like my own. And so we hope to use the goodwill that is enjoyed by many mobile network providers to roll out massive health insurance programs mm -hmm. to cover um, mm -hmm. underserved and uninsured populations. As a member of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul in Lagos, every week I participate in delivering free healthcare services to the poor and uninsured in my local government area. Basic access to healthcare just to see a physician or to have a basic consultation is way out of the reach of so many people. We are 20 million people in Lagos and 180 million in Nigeria. Running a charity healthcare, I can see no more than 20 to 30 people in the two hours that Society of St. Vincent de Paul runs a free clinic every Monday in Lagos. Clearly, we must do more. Clearly, what we're doing is nowhere near enough. We must find ways to expand access to health insurance and access to basic health care to as many people as possible. The first step to solving our huge problems in health care in Africa, I believe, is fixing the very faulty financing system that we currently run. I hope by devising this solution, a solution that expands health insurance to millions of people, we'll be able to start one way to solve the financing problem and the health problem that we currently face on my continent. Thank you for listening. Thank you.